Here we are in Elmwood, Ontario. And what we're going to look at today is combined heat and power through biogas. Biogas is an anaerobic process that takes manure and also I would emphasize city waste, produces methane which is then burnt, makes electricity and heat, and then very importantly in the process the manure is sterilized. It all goes back onto the land and reduces farmers fertility bills. Importantly too though, in the province of Ontario, we now have 35 of these biogas facilities and a whole biogas association. And each one of these facilities on average costs about two and a half million dollars in capital investment. So do the math, two and a half million times 35 and more of these facilities to come because they're providing renewable heat, power, and putting the nutrients back on the land in a sterile state. It's a win-win for everyone. My wife's name is Marcia and my name's Carl. And we thought Marl Creek was a nice uh, flowing sound. And uh, we, we're proud of what we do here. And er a lot of farms are in Ontario, or every farm is in Ontario. And Marl Creek Renewables is because we are a renewable generation facility. And it sounded good. And we also added a little lingo into our uh, farm name, Beef to Biogas. And it, it shows the, the full true circle of what we do here. We, we feed cattle, uh, we, we treat the manure, and we produce electricity. Starting out, we have uh, two receiving pits that are outside that are below ground that we use for, for our receiving of material that goes into the digesters. So in our manure pit, because of the fact that we have solid beef manure on our farm, that solid beef manure cannot be pumped. And this is basically a receiving area as well where we can take the solid manure, put it into a receiving pit, homogenize it so we can pump it into the digester directly. So off to my right here, the concrete tank with the open top, we have uh, an end use storage tank. So that's for, for, uh, for storing the liquid digestate after we've separated the solids out. And that's after the process of digestion. So after it's spent 35 days approximately in the digester, we bring it back through a separator and then the liquid portion of it ends up in that end use repository. And then over here we have an off farm receiving area and it's similar as the manure pit. This is a receiving area behind me here for trucks to dump off farm material uh, that we receive on our farm for biogas. Uh, so we can bring, bring in solid material and or liquid material and put it right into a receiving pit. Um, we can bring in solid, solid waste products from processing facilities or, or food processing facilities that can be either a solid or a liquid. And same concept, if we have a solid material that's, that's requiring uh, some hydration, we can then, in the, in the off-farm pit, we can also bring back into our off-farm receiving pit some liquid hydration to get that off-farm slurry homogenized. On the top left here we have our digester which is the digester outside with the green dome on top or the gas storage. Uh, in the digester right now in the gas storage we have approximately 86.7 percent of the gas storage is full and uh, we operate the digester around 38 right now it's a 36.6 degrees Celsius and we try and aim around that 38 degrees Celsius. Just to kind of start from the top down, we have a, a gas storage, which is the green dome, which is above the liquid level in the digester. So in our digester, we have approximately 3,500 to 4,000 cubic meters of, of manure and food waste. And that level equates to about here. And then from this level up, up inside the digester is our gas storage, which is uh, gas storage for the CHPs, uh, which we produce constantly producing 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Because of the time of year, we did drop our level of our digester to get as much nutrients out onto the field as possible. So we're running around 3,550 cubic meters in that digester at one time. And that calculates into approximately 30 to 35 days of retention time. So it's based on our feed rate on a 24 hour period divided by our volume of material in the digester at one, at one time. With our off-farm material, which is a completely separate uh, 
process for the biogas uh, rules and regulations, it then comes out of a receiving pit, goes up to either hydrolysis tank, and of which the hydrolysis tank is treated at 50 degrees Celsius for 20 hours. So we have a pretreatment tank, we have two of them. So we have pretreatment tank one and pretreatment tank two. Basically, they're designed for a hydrolysis process for food waste or, or processing waste that comes in from outside the farm. So we, we as Morrow Creek have chosen to do all our off-farm material through a hydrolysis process. So these are the vertical tanks where there's heat lines inside, and once again, it's heated to 50 degrees Celsius for 20 hours prior to going into the digester. And as we feed into the digester, we can remove material from that digester because we always feed in, we feed in 24 hours a day and we, we draw material out of the digester and through that process we bring it out of the digester and we send it to a, a little screw press separator that removes the solids from the liquid. So this is manure and food waste that's been through the digestion process and we capture about 25% of this by volume through the screw press separator. So after it comes off the conveyor, we have a solid mass here that we reuse through the, uh, there's two different sources we can use this solid, this solid separation for. One, you could use it for fertilizer on the field because it is uh, nutrient rich and or we can use it as bedding into the cattle pens as comfort for the cattle to lay on. Plus we use corn stalks and straw for bedding for our cattle. As we maintain a, a constant temperature, 38 degrees Celsius and approximately 3,500 to 4,000 cubic meters of material in there at any given time. By heating and feeding material 24 hours a day and maintaining a, a bit of mixing inside the digester, we create a gas called biogas. And our, our, our biogas, we measure four different characteristics of it. CH4 or methane, which is uh, concentration measured in a percent form of anywhere from 50 to 64 uh, percent CH4. We measure the oxygen level, we measure hydrogen, and we measure H2S, which is hydrogen sulfide. So in our, our facility here, we're able to measure and take gas off of the digester, okay, where we, where we cool it outside under the ground in gas cooling field. And that's a natural process by removing the humidity from the gas in a gas cooling field and then of which the, the condensate that we remove from the process in the gas is pumped back over into a receiving pit and then the gas carries on and it goes into a gas train which we feed CHP1. Right now it's running uh, approximately 119 cubic meters of biogas per hour and then we also cool and, and blow the gas to the second CHP and to the third CHP. And this is a screen just showing where we capture the heat off of the uh, CHPs by thermal transfer of heat through heat exchangers and then we send it into our biogas plant through a heating manifold. So basically each CHP is putting to the Ontario Hydro Grid uh, 250 kilowatts per hour and that's what our contracts are for with the Ontario Power Authority and, and in that we, uh, we then have a gas engine running on biogas which spins a generator or a turbine of which puts the hydro back out to the electrical grid. Uh, we feel we built a very safe and reliable facility for a long time, for years to come. Thank mm -hmm. you.